So we can't be a car tuning channel if we don't talk about one of those legendary engines from Mitsubishi, the 4G63, typically fitted to the Mitsubishi Evo, but it was fitted in lots of other models of car. And for a four cylinder turbocharged engine, it has so much potential for tuning project. In fact, we've seen some of these engines push to figures in excess of 1000 horsepower. So in this video, we're just gonna discuss some of the best mods and upgrades for it. So our aim really is to help you to decide where to spend your money, those mods that give you the biggest bang for your buck. So swapping heads around is a common project that people do on these engines. So if you had one of the lower powered variants, it's often better to get the better flowing characteristics from one of the more recent heads. Obviously, you've got to do other mods to support that, but it can be more cost effective to go out and buy a ready made optimized head than to take one of those older heads in and get it properly flowed. So the main difference really is the port sizes within the head. The 4G63 engine was very, very smooth running. So it was nicely balanced from the factory. They were quite fastidious in the components they put into these engines, but there was a dual balancing shaft module as well, which further reduced the vibrations that you would get from each cycle of the engine. Though with the 4G63, it's fair to say that each new generation and iteration of the engine was better than its predecessor. So if you're looking for upgrade parts, try and source it from a donor engine that is as recent and as new as possible. So limits on stock in terms on some of these higher performance variants is around the 400 horsepower mark. We often see these tuned to about 500 horsepower, but in most cases, I would strongly recommend you think about strengthening those internal engine components just to make sure you've retained the reliability of these engines. So depending on the crank you've got in your 4G63 engine, if you had the forged crank, that can generally handle about 700 horsepower. It's worth noting that a lot of the early engines had slightly softer or weaker components in them, so they can't be pushed to these higher power levels. So if you've got one of the early variants, it's certainly worth thinking about getting those internal components just upgraded to take it to the next level. So changing the cam profile is obviously one of the biggest changes you can make to most of these engines. If you've got the MIVEC system, that's already altering the valve timing, the durations and the valve lift that you've got. The benefits of adding a cam to those is somewhat questionable. Please let me know if you've done that, if you found benefits from that, um, or if it's just a mod that you should really ignore if you've got one of those MIVEC versions. But if you don't have that variable valve timing and lift control, the cam is really the best way of setting a more optimal more characteristic, typically pushing the power band to a higher levels. And it's usually at the higher end of the RPM range that you see the benefits with fast road cams. Depending on how aggressive a profile you get will determine how well behaved the car is at the low end tick over because it can create quite a lumpy idle at the bottom end of your RPM band. So with camshaft upgrades, the cam alters the timing of the opening and closing of the intake and the exhaust valves. So the cam has quite a big bearing on the power profile, where the power is in the RPM range and how much power you will make on the engine. And even on stock engine, before the MIVEC was introduced, you would see significant power gains dropping in a more sporty profile cam. But you've got to be wary that you don't go too aggressive because that will typically affect the low down idle, the tick over of the car, and can make it quite challenging to drive in traffic. But that's obviously not a consideration if you're using the car in a motorsport environment and you want to extract the maximum amount of power from it. So engines from about 99 to 2004, typically on the Evo 6 to 8, used pretty much an identical camshaft profile. The Evo 9 that came out from 2005 onwards saw the MIVEC Mitsubishi's innovative valve electronic control system installed, which further allowed more control over the opening and closing of the valves. And using that system, it actually allows the turbo to spool up more quickly. You can increase the velocity of the air coming out of the engine as it hits the turbo and that can reduce a lot of the low down lag. So a lot of engines that don't have the MIVEC system on will experience a lot of low down lag if you put a really big turbo on. So that's a consideration when you specify the turbo and you look at the setup. So names that crop up quite often when upgrading the cams on the 4G63 engine are Crower, BC and Camtech. And getting the right profile will make a significant difference to where the power is and it will support all of your other mods. So a, a camshaft isn't really just a mod you 
you bolt in and hope for the best. You've got to do other things, particularly around the ECU, the ignition timing, and make sure the engine is set up properly for that cam profile in order to release the maximum amount of power from those potential mods that you've done. When they put hydraulic valve lifters and roller rockers, it reduces a lot of the problems that you have where you need to continually adjust the valve lift and it minimizes the amount of noise and rattles that you get from that region of the engine. Also, it reduces the amount of wear and tear that the valve train system has. So engine tunes here in the UK, we refer to that as remapping because you're taking the map that's inside the ECU or the computer in the engine and you're changing it for more favorable characteristics. Hence the phrase of remap. Depending on where you live, there's probably other names for this. But in this section, we're just talking about engine tuning, changing what goes on inside the computer and the benefits that that can give you as a driver. And it really is one of the simplest mods that can be done and the most effective. So in terms of return on your investment, the remap, the engine tune, the engine flash or the ECU reprogram are generally the best ways to go. So with most engines, optimizing the computer that controls the boost from the turbo, the valves, the fueling, is the biggest change that you can make to the engine. So that's a bit of a challenge on the 4G63 engine. If you know a way of getting it remapped, please let me know in the comments. Um, but most people I've spoken to have looked at some of the alternatives out there to alter the way the ECU itself is working. So they've gone for either piggyback devices or a boost controller. So Ultronic and AEM make boost controllers that work really well on the 4G63 engine. Our members have used that to great effect. It's had a really beneficial effect. One member said that it was a night and day difference when he had this boost controller fitted. He went for the Autronics um, and he just said it rocks. It's one of his favorite mods that he's ever done to his 4G63. So these aftermarket units generally operate at higher operations per second than the stock computer. So it allows a much finer degree of control over the parameters that the engine is working to. And you can really optimize the power delivery depending on the driving conditions, whether it's under load or you're off throttle. So we'd strongly recommend you look at the electronic side, perhaps do that as your last mod because it ties in all the other mods you've done. So depending on which route you go will depend on how the aftermarket ECU is set up and it will need to re-optimize itself to just get the timing and the spark and the fueling exactly right for the setup that you've installed. So there's actually quite a few aftermarket ECU to use around to choose from. Um, but there's a few brands that just keep cropping up when we talk to people about tuning the 4G63. And in our own experience, things that seem to just work really well on this particular engine and configuration, depending on what you do in your tuning project will depend on which one you invest in. And these can be quite expensive upgrades, but have a look at the range offered from Haltech, Vipec, Apexy, the Power FC, Lynx, and Motec. All of those come and pretty much a plug and play on the 4G63 because you can get the wiring looms that just plug into the existing connectors. And that makes life a lot easier rather than having to custom make your own loom and get involved in all the wiring that goes on. A decent ECU will also get rid of the need for a separate boost controller. Now, in its simply stage, the boost on the turbo can be either on or off, and that would be very, very crude and very hard to deal with. So you're looking for one that's got a graduated operation of the boost controller. So a lot of these ECUs offer about 12 different steps. It allows for much finer delivery of the power, much smoother throttle response. So with any tuning project, the aim is to get as much air and fuel burnt as possible with each combustion cycle of the engine. So just making sure that everything is working as efficiently as possible and that you minimize all of the restrictions in the system is a great way to go. So one of the restrictions you will typically find is in the head around the valves. So the way the air flows through the valves into the engine can have a big bearing on the power that you make and also on the efficiency of the engine. So cutting different paths through the head around the valves, doing a three or five angle valve job, just opening up the valve curtain area, allowing as much air as possible into the engine can really reap dividends. It's not something you can do yourself. It needs to be done properly on a flow bench so you can see the optimizations as they happen and really get the engine set up and it really does pay to take your 4G63 to someone who really understands these engines well 
and can set the optimum flow profile just to put that power in the exact zone that you want. So one of the best ways of getting more air into a 4G63 engine is the turbocharger. So that's effectively compressing the air, sucking more air into the engine and then pushing that through the valves into the engine. So the way the turbo works and compresses has a big bearing on the amount of air you can get into the engine. And you know you need to match air to fuel. So we will be looking at fueling in a second, but let's just talk about turbochargers and turbo upgrades on your 4G63. So from 1996 in cars like the Mitsubishi Evo 4, the TD05 turbo was used. It was a twin scroll setup, so it was optimized to really spool up very, very quickly at those lower RPM figures. And it worked really well and offers a decent amount of flexibility for the tuner. We see those turbos supporting power figures of about 400 horsepower. Hitting that and going just beyond, you should really start to look at strengthening the con rods in the engine. That's typically the weak spot that keeps cropping up at these power levels. If you're doing a turbo swap, we'd also recommend, because you're unbolting stuff, from the engine and the old parts get quite brittle that you upgrade the hoses the connectors and the intercooler itself because by the time you've removed these and put the old ones back on they're likely to just split or you're going to have problems in the future so just source a decent set of alternatives the silicon options there's hard pipe kits that you can get as well but just make sure that you don't skimp on that aspect of upgrading your project if you've invested in a turbo you really should be investing in the rest of the setup around the turbo and around the engine engine and just make sure that nothing is going to fail on your debut outing. So the Garrett GT30 turbo or the MHI TF06R will take your power levels to round about 400 to 500 horsepower. So typically right in the middle about 450, but there's a little bit of scope and it depends very much on your setup and the other mods that you do to the engine. But at this point, your fuel system is going to start to struggle. So you should be looking at upgrading that fuel system. At 500 horsepower, you need a pretty good fuel delivery system. The injectors and the fuel pump will both need to be upgraded and uprated. The injector dynamics, the ID 1050s have been used on these projects quite a lot and work really well. And you would combine that with typically a GT 30 R turbo. But now you get to the point where you need to start thinking about the engine cooling and the lubrication of the engine because you're putting a lot more stress and a lot more heat through that engine. So that would typically now be the weak spot that you need to focus on. If you want to push power even further to say 560 horsepower, power sort of going beyond the 500 it's the turbocharger really that will get you there the garrett 3579 turbo will generally be there for you for those power levels you're now asking for about 2.5 bars of boost so the manifold itself and the connectors between the turbo and the manifold really do need to be uprated to handle those extra pressures and i should point out at this point that a lot of stainless steel aftermarket manifolds and connectors often fail they degrade the, the metals actually splits. So don't cheap out on components. Make sure you get a good quality stainless steel manifold for these sorts of boost levels and power figures. It's fair to say that since this engine was first designed, turbocharger technology has really come on leaps and bounds. So there's a lot of aftermarket options that will really take this engine to the next level. So hybrid turbos take the stock turbo design, rip out the internals and then replace it with higher flowing alternatives. You can alter the spooling characteristics so perhaps it spools up a little bit earlier on you tend to sacrifice a little bit of the top end power when you do that or you can get it top end power optimized so you get a much bigger overall horsepower figure which is great for drag racing for motorsports but it can make driving in traffic and that low end a little bit down on power in some instances but generally whatever you want the turbocharger can be optimized to deliver those flow characteristics and with modern twin scroll turbo designs you can really get the best of both worlds, optimizing the fast spool up at the low end of the RPM range, but also those big power figures at the top end. So when you've swapped out the turbo, you'll probably find that within the intake, there is a restriction. So look at the air filters themselves. So a lot of people go with cone filters on the 4G63. You've got to be careful you're not sucking warm air in from the engine bay area because warm air carries less oxygen. So you'll be down on power. If you've got an open filter, it's a good idea to isolate that from the engine and to have a cold air feed though the engine can get the benefit of those lower intake temperatures a lot of people will
will just replace the stock factory paper filter with a high performance, higher flowing alternative. So these mods are only really worth doing if you're experiencing restriction. On the stock engine, changing the intake doesn't make significant power gains. There is a power gain, obviously, because you're removing the power restriction. You generally see an extra three or 4% at the top end of the RPM range, but you won't really notice that in everyday driving. It's quite a small power bump and your money is generally better spent elsewhere. But if you've pushed the engine to suck lots more air in than it would originally have been designed to, you will find there is that restriction in the intake. And also the airflow sensor itself that's telling the engine how much air is coming in will probably start to struggle at these higher airflow figures. So going up to a four bar air sensor is a good idea on a lot of projects. But again, the aftermarket ECU that you choose needs to be set up to take that into account. So if you didn't want to go the full aftermarket ECU route, there's an option where you can just get the boost controller revised. So the boost controller controls the wastegate. So the exhaust gases, the way they flow into the turbo, by altering the amount of gases flowing in at any given point, you can alter the way the turbo responds to the accelerator. So you can make the boost come on much more progressively than a lot of the stock factory setups. And you can also push it beyond those stock limits to a certain extent. With stock factory ECU, you will often hit limitations and have problems if you go too far. But a boost controller can really transform the drivability and the flexibility that you get from your engine and from the turbocharger. So we've talked very much about increasing the amount of air into the engine. Now that needs to be matched to fuel. You can't just dump more air in and expect more power. You need the fuel to burn and the fuel needs the oxygen in order to burn. So we've addressed that. We've got the oxygen going into the engine. So what do we have to do to improve the fueling on your 4G63 engine? Well, looking at the injectors, the amount of fuel that those injectors can flow is obviously critical. Just by increasing the fuel pressure can have a bearing on the amount of power you can potentially get from those stock injectors. So it's a little bit of a bodge just increasing the fuel rail pressure, but it can be effective. It can overdrive those injectors. So you'll be able to hit those slightly higher power figures, but increasing the capacity of the injectors and maybe optimizing the spray pattern as well can improve the way the 4G63 burns the fuel itself. But you've got to bear in mind, it's not just a matter of improving the injectors the high pressure fuel pump supplying the fuel needs to be able to maintain a high enough pressure. So in some instances, we recommend fitting a fuel surge tank, which can minimize the problems you get under heavy cornering. So when the car is experiencing heavy cornering and there's big G-forces affected, that can affect the flow of the fuel from the engine. So just having a surge tank, it can actually smooth out that flow. So it acts like a buffer just to ensure that there is sufficient fuel being supplied to the engine at any given point. If you just bump up the fuel pressure by increasing the pump and the injectors, you may find that those fuel lines, which are probably getting on and are getting quite old now, are starting to leak or struggling to keep that fuel pressure safely contained. And that's a really dangerous situation to have. You do not want fuel spraying out or leaking out into the engine. So if you do any mods like this to your engine, you really should look at those fuel lines and get stronger fuel lines, or at least renew them for better quality ones that can resist those pressures more effectively. So so we've looked so far at getting more air and more fuel into your 4G63 engine. So it's burning. You've got the combustions going on inside the engine, which leaves a large amount of exhaust gases that need to flow out of the engine. So let's talk now about exhausts and exhaust upgrades. So some of the more recent versions of the 4G63 may well have a catalyst, and that's often a point of restriction in the exhaust system. But optimizing the headers, the way the exhaust gases flow out of the engine can improve the scavenging and can help you make slightly more power it can also affect the way the turbo spools up. So if you've got a very efficient exhaust system that's allowing the optimum flow of gases, that can allow that turbo to spool up more quickly at those lower RPM figures. A decent exhaust system will really set you back, but they do last a long time. On their own, an exhaust system won't make significantly more power. And most people will just look at the muffler and maybe replace it with a sports muffler. So the exhaust gases are flowing more freely. They'll also get that nicer exhaust note from the 4G63. But look at the exhaust system as a whole. Don't overlook the headers. There's a lot of stuff going on in the headers that can dramatically alter the way the engine produces power and its characteristics when you're driving it hard. So it's a little bit of a compromise with an exhaust. At low RPMs, you want a fairly narrow bore to 
maintain the velocity. And at higher RPMs, that will become a restriction. So you need a larger bore size. So you need to choose a bore size that is optimal to the power range that you typically want that power to be most readily available in. So we mentioned the catalyst a moment ago. So the older engines won't have these catalysts. So the catalyst takes those exhaust gases and forces them to react in such a way that the emissions are much less harmful than they would be directly from the engine. So these are basic honeycombs that allow the exhaust gases to flow through them and allow that reaction to take place. So stock factory ones can be very badly designed sometimes. So the aftermarket sports alternatives tend to have wider channels. They allow greater flow and they're often larger in size. So there's less of a restriction in the exhaust system. So it's illegal in most areas to remove the cat completely or to, in some regions, replace it with a sports cat if the original cat is working. But if you're in an area where it doesn't matter, removing the cat is obviously the cheapest option. But you'll see a similar power gain by going for a sports cat. There is a decent range of sports catalyst options around that will replace the stock factory one. So on the side of the engine, you've got the big metal flywheel that stores the kinetic energy as the engine rotates. And that smooths out the transitions in engine speed. So the RPMs will rise and fall depending on the amount of weight in that flywheel. So going with a lighter flywheel will increase that rate of rise and fall. So in a sporty environment, you want the revs to change quite quickly to allow you to rev match as you change gear. But on the road, when you're driving, if you've gone too light with your flywheel, you'll find it tends to bog down quite easily on hills. You need to make constant throttle adjustments to just maintain constant speeds. So a really light flywheel can be quite unforgiving in daily traffic, whereas the heavy one is not really well suited to the motorsport environment where you want the revs exactly at the point you need for the gear change to mesh properly. So another advantage of a lighter flywheel is you are reducing the overall weight of the engine. So that will definitely have a little bit of an effect on the performance and the handling. Um, but talk to people who've done this on their 4G63. So depending on the engine you've got, the version you've got and the car it's going in will have a bearing on which flywheel weight you should go for. So the balance shafts that are inside the engine really do help to smooth everything out. But often they're removed when people start tuning these engines, they start chasing the higher RPM figures. So in order to do that and keep the engine running smooth, it's important to make sure all of the components are balanced in the engine. It's not just a question of weighing them. You need to make sure they're balanced in rotation, that the engine is nicely set up and there's not unnecessary vibrations going on in the engine. But generally, even without the balance shaft modules, these 4G63 engines run very, very smooth. It's a really nice Mitsubishi engine. So it's a great project to work on. And we've seen these dropped in Civics and lots of other cars, even drag racers have used the 4G63 as a base because it is a really good solid block to work from. So I hope this has been an interesting overview of the 4G63. We've got more in-depth videos coming up on this wonderful engine particularly as it was fitted to the Mitsubishi Evolution. And there was quite a few different iterations of the Mitsubishi Evolution. We'd love you to subscribe if you haven't done so. And please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.